What's going on my Century Gunnet? It's the Sentry Friend here, so back again with another classic Survivor Series pay-per-view review. This month marks the 25th anniversary of a classic Survivor Series show I'm going to talk about right now. That is Survivor Series 1997 at the Molten Centre, right up called the Bell Centre in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. On the 9th of November 1997, the attendance of the show was 20,593. Survivor Series 97 received about 250,000 pay-per-view buys, an upgrade than the 1996 Survivor Series show because it's in MSG. It's known for Cycle Sid vs. Shawn Michaels, The Rock's debut, Undertaker vs. Mankind, plus Bret Austin 1. Survivor Series 96 received about 199,000 pay-per-view buys. Very close in that 200 mark. The commentators for the show are Jim Ross and Jerry the King Lawler. This show is memorable for many things. The debut of Steve Blackman. This is the first of two Survivor Series in Canada. I'll get to that shortly. Plus the Montreal School Job. Yeah, first of two Survivor Series in Canada. And the next time they did a Survivor Series pay-per-view up in Canada will be almost 20 years later in 2016 in Toronto. That's known for the Goldberg combat match against Brock Lesnar. Plus the first of six brand superior Survivor Series shows between 2016 until 2021. So speaking of the Montreal Screwjob, I am not going to cover a lot of the Montreal Screwjob. I want to get to the main event. I'll talk about some of it because the reason why, because I want to focus on talking about the other matches on the show, not just the main event, you know, that's Brent and Sean. Um, and also the reason why, because you're not going to get the truth. Let, let's be real. We're not getting the full truth of the module school job. So I'll talk about some of it, but not a lot. So all right, it'll be a very long video I'm trying to keep it for like, very a bit a bit short. Otherwise, it could be like a, a two hour videos. I don't do that, you know. I do streams, <laughs> but not like an actual wrestling pay per view review. Anyway, so um, the first match. This is the first of four Survivor Series matches on the show. And by the way, there is no build, no like proper build. Anyway, so the first Survivor Series match of the night. The opener. Uh, we got, you can say, Team Headbanners versus Team Godwin. So, representing Team Headbanners, we've got the Headbanners, that is Martin Thrasher. With the new Blackjacks, that is Blackjack Bradshaw, aka the future JBL, you know, future WWE champion JBL. He ended up part of the um, APA with Farouk. Um, anyway, so, and also we've got Blackjack uh, uh, Wyndham, that is Barry Wyndham with dark hair. Used to be part of the Four Horsemen in WCW. Um, taking on, um, yeah, like I said, Team Godwins. That is the Godwins, Henry and Phileas Godwin. Plus the New Age Outlaws. They're not really officially called the New Age Outlaws yet. But for this review, I'm going to call them the New Age Outlaws. That is Road Dog Jesse James and Badass Billy Gunn. This is their first pay-per-view as a tag team. You know, they just start teaming up as a tag team earlier. I'm covering the, those Raws. Um, yeah, they were winning. So anyway, um, before they end up joining D Generation X, they were kind of like represent Texas, something like that, you know. Um, Road Dog cut promo says that, was it Shares and, and Quiz in the ring? Anyway, so the, this is a mixture of uh, mid-90s WWF. Oh, by the way, this is... You can say this is the first or the first pay per view of the Attitude Era, I think, and also the game, and also the the tagline for the show is <laughs> "Game Rules" because everyone's in the fact, everyone's in the faction, Ever has everyone's in the game. That's uh, what AEW is doing, not right now, but when they start AEW. But anyway, so um, yeah, it's a mixture of mid nineties WWF and future Attitude Era, all in one in this match. So. Because, yeah, Heck Banners and the New Age Outlaws represent the Attitude Era of the company. Plus the Garwins and the and the Black Jacks represent, yeah, you can say, the New Generation Era. Anyway, uh, the match was just filler, mediocre. Um, no one got over, man. Instead of um, the New Age Outlaws, you know, get to that shortly. So, 
Um, yeah, they, they were booing Billy Gunn out of the um the building. They were trying faggot chants towards Billy Gunn. You know, because this is um mid nineties professional wrestling. You can't really say faggot um in today's professional wrestling product. Whether it's WWE or AEW, probably in indies, wherever you go. Anyway, so the Soul Survivors are the New Age Outlaws. It's basically it's purposely to pull over the New Age Outlaws. You know, Road Dog and Billy Gunn. Um, in the end, I think it, I think it was Thrasher. I think Marsh got eliminated um, early off this match. So I think it was Thrasher called the uh, pop handle slam by Road Dog, trying to pin uh, Road Dog, and then Billy Gunn. Um, hit a move off the top rope onto Thrasher, so road and pins Thrasher to get the victory. So the New Age Outlaws are the sole survivors of this Survivor Series match. Like I said, filler. It wasn't that bad. There've been worse Survivor Series matches before and after this, but it's just mediocre. Uh, oh yeah, the only tag team got over was the New Age Outlaws. Yeah, they were booed. Yeah, but besides that, you know. Uh, Martin Thrasher, the Headbanners were losers, Blackjacks, get, their gimmick is so outdated because we're getting close of the Attitude Era, so so let's move on to the next match. So the next match, this is another Survivor Series match. Uh, we got the DOA, DOA, Disciple of the Apocalypse. Uh, that is Crush, uh, Chains, Skull, and 8-Ball taking on members of the Truth Commission. Represent the Truth Commission. We've got Jesus Christ. I'm gonna butcher these um names. Um, in the corner we've got the Jackal. By the way, the ja I'll get to, I'll get to him shortly. So we got Recon. Recon that is Bull Buchanan. Who went on to become the Big Boss Man's Lackey, plus member of Right to Censor, and also the bodyguard of John Cena when John Cena started out like the dog. Oh, was it the Doctor of Thugmanics gimmick that was around what well, late. 02, early 2003. Um, that's Recon. Sniper is a wrestler called Luke Poet Pure. I can't, I can't really pronounce his name. He's basically a Canadian wrestler. Um, we got the Interrogator. The Interrogator is Kurgan, the future Kurgan, by the way. And um, Tank. Actually, Tank was no longer part of the group. Got was la left the company eight months prior. He was formerly known as Mantar. And also, it's managed by the Jackal, also competing in this match. The Jackal is the, the future Cyrus the Fires uh, uh, when he went to ECW, when ECW was on TNN. And also, that's Don, Cal Don Callis, by the way. Future commentator in New Japan and Impact Wrestling and part of the elite in AEW. So, he replaced the Commandant of the Truth Commission. So, the reason why, because... I never knew that when I'm reviewing these Raws, I think, where's the Commandant? You know, here's the, here's the, I'm going to get the full information. Don't my research, folks. So, the Commandant's real name is Robin Smith. He's a South African actor. He's not really part of the wrestling business, you know. He looks like a, like a guy who's managing and wrestled in the territory days in the, what, the 70s and the 80s, or the early 80s, up to the mid-80s. Anyway, so, his real name is Robin Smith, so... Uh, this past summer, not this year, I'm talking about in 1997, he cut this promo on Raw, said about the United States and America lack discipline. He got backlash by the fans, so... And also he was part of the company in early 97 when the company toured in South Africa. So yeah, he cut that promo, says the USA lacked di discipline. He got backlash by the fans, so he ended up leaving not just the, the company, but he ended up le leaving the... The wrestling business altogether because and also the reason why because he needs a manager to, he doesn't really, he's not really a trained wrestler he needs to find a wrestler who can actually take the bump so he basically like I said left the company and also left the wrestling business altogether to focus on just to get, focus on more on acting so it's just the end of the commandant in professional wrestling so the jackal is filling in for the commandant so. Um, this is basically this anti-South African thing. This is after when Nelson Mandela got released from jail. And, man, <coughs> Finch Russo. <coughs> Finch Russo. I don't want to get into that. So, yeah, the Truth Commission sucks, by the way. So, anyway, the match sucked. Trying to keep it short and simple. I don't like this, man. It's just boring. You know, I think it was Slywalk Slam, Slywalk Slam in some portion of the match. I did not, I did not give a shit, so... 
In the end, the Tirigator hit, I think he hit the Slywop Slam onto Crush to win this match for his team. And that was it. It didn't really do the Truth Commission any favours because, like I said, they were not getting over, let's be honest. The by time, I think the Truth Commission left in, or well, stayed around until 1999 when I think the, la the last survivors of the group was, I think it was Recon, no, I think it was maybe Recon, Recon and Sniper because most of them left after ni after 1997 so yeah it was just a crap group and the DOA were the baby faces they got cheered but yeah at least they got cheered because the the, the opener of survivor this match no one gives no one react the reps a little bit but they didn't really care but yeah um still put like loses the um DOA there people talk about aces and eights being the worst biker group Look at look at this group, DOA. They were both like losers. Um, but damn, the truth commission was shit. No one got over. So let's move on to the next match. So, um, and also it was kind of thrown away. Like when when I say earlier, I said this is no build to this. There is no build. Maybe maybe they build on Saturday night main event. I'm not gonna find it because you're not gonna find it on the network. But I felt like it was thrown some matches like this. All four survivors' matches was thrown together without any build. It's just what it is. So, and anyway, let's move on to the next match. I'm rambling, by the way. So, so the next match. Um, this is another survivor series match. We got Team USA versus Team Canada. So, represent Team USA. Oh boy, we got Fader. We got um, Goldust. Oh, I'll get to his gimmick uh, shortly. We got Mark Mero with Sable in his corner. Um, we got boy, I think that's five. Um, and then what we got? Uh, yeah, we got the debut of Steve Blackman. Steve Blackman. Um, I'll get to him shortly as well. So Blackman just debut on the Go Home Raw after the dog collar match between Vader and the British Bulldog. So I think that's that. Yeah, five. So Vader, yeah, uh, yeah, Vader Blackman, yeah, Vader Blackman, Mark Mero. And Goldus, yeah, and, and now let's get to Team Canada. So representing Team Canada, uh, we got British Bulldog, David Boy Smith, Jim the Anvil Ninehard, and Doug Doug Furness and Phil the Fawn. Yeah, it was four and four. I thought it was five five and five. Um, anyway, so the Team USA thing, so out of place, bunch of misfits, and also they play. In the yeah, when they're coming out to the ring, they play the Patriots theme music because at this moment in time, the Patriot was injured. He was, uh, Blackman was filling in for the Patriot. The Patriot is the late, uh, Dale, was it Dale, Dale Wilkes? So I'm trying to pronounce his name properly. I almost coming Des Wilkes, but it's actually Dale Wilkes, the Patriot. He's filling in for the Patriot, Dale Wilkes, because the Patriot suffered a bicep injury. <laughs> he was gone. His final match was the flag match between. Him and Vader taking on Brett and Bulldog. That was his last, basically last match of the company because he ended up like not coming back. Suffered a bicep injury. Suffered a bicep injury. Never come back. And then, and he just died last year in two thousand twenty one at the age. I think he was in his sixties. So, anyway, so Blackman was filling in. He, you know, he debuted on the Go Home Raw before on this show. So he, this is his first pay per view match. Um, Goldust just came off, and speaking of the Gold Home Show Raw, you had Goldust as a heel now because he, um, in a, in a this is kayfabe by the way, I think it's kayfabe. He basically ended the the marriage of Marlena, that's Terry Reynolds. He ended up changing up his makeup, you know, his face paint. It just says F U. I'm still alive. F U stands for fuck you. Um. Anyway, uh, Mark Merrow was, this is the start of the whole Mark Merrow Sable thing, because in this match, you know, the fans were chanting for Sable, and not uh, not the baby faces on the show, uh, on this match, by the way, um, and some matches on the show, by the way, so anyway, so, um, they will, you know, this is the start of the Mark Merrow Sable thing, because Sable's getting more attention than Mark Merrow, um, yeah, the whole, yeah, Doug LaForm and and Phil, uh, was it Doug? So Doug Furness and Phil Levon. My apologies, you know. I don't, by the time they, they were there, they will never see him ever again. Yeah, I think they had gone back to ECW or or vice versa. So this whole USA Team Canada thing is a bit, bit out. Yeah, it was just. 
I think it's just basically climating the, the whole USA Canada thing. They've been doing it since the, really since the spring with the, the Heart Foundation done it. And then they kind of been it to death at this moment in time. No one gives, no one cares. So, but anyway, this was a really good match. Um, the fans were again behind Bulldog, Neidhart, Lafon, and Furness. Booing, I think booing Mero because they were trying Sable. Because Sable's getting over. But booing the baby faces, man. They're not, they're not really getting over. I'm trying to keep it short, simple, and rambling, by the way. So, um, anyway, um, the Soul Survivors, I think it's the British Bulldog, you know. After Fade Eliminate, um, I think it was Doug Furness. Um, Steve Blackman was good in this match, you know. Um, yeah, he didn't really do much in the. He, uh, he was hard. I think he was hardcore champion, and afterwards, yeah, reason why he didn't do do much in the company because of lack of charisma. He did well, but he got like he got himself counted out in this match. So, Fader, you could say Fader is the MVP of this match. You know, eliminated Ninehard and Lafon, um, he, and also Furness. So, in the end, Bulldog hit uh Fader with the bell and scored the victory. Because I think Vader and Bulldog had history. Because if you don't know that, because Vader and Bulldog feud in WCW over the WCW World Heavyweight Championship when Vader was the champion. So yeah, it's a it's a it's a bit of a fun fact. So um, you know, so at least um, I think yeah, the heels won. The heels, wow, the heels won three out of the four Survivor Series matches. You know. Road Dog and Billy Gunn are the sole survivors of the opener. The Truth Commission won for the second match. You know, that second survivors of this match. I'm probably uh, mean. And now Team U Canada defeat Team, U Team USA because Bulldog and Ninehard represent Canada, even though they're not Canadian, they're, you know, from the UK. And I think Ninehard, you know, Jim the Apple Ninehard is from the, um, I think the USA. He's American. And said like neither of those wrestlers are no no longer with us. Like, um, you know, Goldust is still alive, Mark Merrill's still alive, but Bulldog, Ninehard, um, I think Fitness or Lafon died. Wow, shit man, so I'm uh, moving on man, so um now we got a bit of a break. Um so we got I think it's a bit of a break. Um so the next yeah, so the next match we got Kane making his WWF pay-per-view, um, really his first pay-per-view match on pay-per-view. He made his debut at Bad Blood the previous month, taking on Mankind. So, the, you know, Kane, like, for weeks now, he's paid on Raw, but not in matches, but, like, cleaning out houses, destroying people in his path. One of them is Mankind, so... on the I think it was a few weeks prior, Paul Bearer used to marish... Um, Mankind doing um, uh, Mick Foley, Mankind's <laughs> The Undertaker called Mankind a pebble. So, this is a, uh, yeah, this is a good, um, a good, um, promo Mankind cut because I don't talk about promos in, in my paper reviews. So, he basically says he's going to go through the wall that is referring to Kane, and he got pissed off when, uh, when uh, Paul Bearer, you know, called him a pebble, said like he's going to like. When he's got his fingers between his trembling, flabby jaws, and when his eyes came out of his mind, I'm going to tell you a question. Do you look like a pebble? Wow. Good promo for Mick Foley. You know, it's Mankind. So, anyway, the match between Kane and Mankind, um, it was a, it was a good match, to be honest. I really like it. Uh, Mankind bumped, <laughs> bumped his ass off in this match, so I really like it. The match came red, and you know, it just like showing the red light. It's similar to what the fiend done like twenty odd years later. I don't want to get into it. So, Kane in his early run in the company was this slow paced monster. He's not doing the flying clothesline off the top rope yet. And mankind's known for you know the physical side. You know he enjoys pain. Uh, they didn't announce it that this is a no DQ match. So when Mankind hit came with the um when Kane hit Mankind with the still steps and Mankind hit Kane with the chair, you know what? The referee didn't call for the bell. So like what gives? So anyway, so it was a fun match to watch. You know, like Kane um Kane. It's a good big break for Glenn Jacobs. That's Kane's real name. Yeah, he was um Isaac Yankum. He was a Christmas tree 
I think it was some indie show or in the day that I have around like the early 90s. Then he was Dr. Isaac Yankin in his uh, match with Bret Hart at SummerSlam. That was during the feud with Jerry Licking Lawler, by the way. SummerSlam 95. I think that gimmick expires what Britt Baker become a dentist. You know, like the two wrestlers with dentist gimmicks are Isaac Yankin, Glenn Jacobs, and Britt Baker in AEW. Um, and also, he, you know, and he end up becoming the fake Diesel in 1996. Now, Kane. This is one of his successful gimmicks for Glenn Jacobs. So, anyway, so Kane chokes, I think he chokes on Mankind through the announce table. Yeah, like I said, he was bumping his ass off. I think, like, Kane did, like, a suit, like, uh, Mankind was going for, like, a move off the top rope. No, I think he throw, no, I think he grabbed Mankind and threw him off into the ring apron outside the ring. Wow, he was bumping his ass off Man Mick Foley, Mankind, so. In the end, Kane hit Mankind, not the choke slam, but the Tombstone Power Driver to win. So, this was Kane's first match, first win, first match, first win, so. Um, yeah, um, it's not like Mankind's doing a, a, a he's not jobbing out, he's, like, pull up a fight against Kane, you know, Kane's trying to do what Undertaker's doing, so, and speaking of The Undertaker, no Undertaker on this show, it's a bit disappointing because this is the first Survivor Series, well, The Undertaker, since he debuted in 1990, you know, he's been in 91, I think 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, he's not, um, there for 97, so. I don't get it, so, but, um, anyway, it's just building up Kane, still, like, building up Kane for The Undertaker, leading up to their match at WrestleMania 14, the following year, in 1998, so, yeah, it's a good, you know, I get kudos to Mick Foley putting over Kane, because he's gonna be, like, the next, you know, both Mankind and Kane gonna be future world champions in the next couple of years, Mankind will, uh, you know, in the next, well, one or two years, because Matt Kane wins the world title the following year in 1998, and Mankind, Mick Foley wins the world title in 1999. So let's move on. I'm, I'm rambling. So so moving on to the fourth and final Survivor Series match. We got, you know, we got uh, Ken Shamrock and the Legion of Doom. And Ahmed Johnson, forgot him. So Ken Shamrock, Legion of Doom, Ahmed Johnson, take it on members of the Nation of Domination. Farouk, uh, Rocky Maivia, the future Rock. Kama Mustafa, the future Godfather, and D'Lo Brown. This is a really good. This is, in my opinion, this is the best out of the four Survivor Series match on the show. So I really like it. Um, the first person got eliminated was Hawk. Hawk got eliminated by Rock. Rock hit the um or Rocky Maivia. But I'm, I'll bow back and forth calling Rocky and Rock. So Rock hit uh Hawk with the future Rock bomb to eliminate him. Then Ahmed Johnson uh, eliminated Farouk, the leader of the Nation of Domination, hitting him with the Pure River Plunge. And then afterwards, Rock eliminated Ahmed Johnson by the help by Farouk, you know, pinning him, you know, use, you know, grabbing his foot for leverage to eliminate him. So Farouk and Ahmed Johnson, basically running, you know, Ahmed Johnson chasing Farouk. They end up uh, brawling. I think this is sent up. I don't know. They did like a blow off to this. I think I don't know. I think they did. I don't know. It's a blow up or something. I don't know. Anyway, so um, who got eliminated first? D.L. Brown. I think he got eliminated by no. I think Hot got eliminated by. I think I think the Rock eliminated him. No, I can't. I can't remember who got eliminated. Um. So yeah, the final two. Um. Yeah, the final two is um. Yeah, Hawk, uh, Ken Shamrock, D.L. and and Rocky Maivia. So. Yeah, I think Hawk got eliminated by. Oh, they got eliminated. Oh, he got. She, he got counted out. My apologies. Um. Yeah, Hawk got counted out by. Um. So here's the his thing. You got the New Age Outlaws coming out. And by the way, um, it's funny. Like um, LOD are the at the time the WWF Tag Team Champions. It's funny. Like in the opener, you know, the last month's pay per view, of uh, Bad Blood. You had the Garwins defeated the Heck Banners for the Tag Team Championship. Then a few weeks later, they end up dropping the titles to the to the Legion of Doom. Anyway, yeah, yeah I remember, you know, yeah, in this match, you know, uh, uh, Animal got eliminated by account. So you got the New Edge Outlaws. They, you know, they're not I New Edge Outlaws yet, but I'm gonna call them. So Billy Gunn and Road Dog stole the Legion of Doom's shoulder pads. Stood, uh, I think, uh, I think Billy Gunn wearing their face paint. 
uh, road dog kind of throw white powder in the eyes of animal so animal got counted out so this is further up the rivalry between LOD versus New Age Outlaws that led up to a few weeks later um, New, Age, New Age Outlaws went defeat the Legion of Doom on Raw to win the Tag Team Championships I think it's the first of six or the first of five Tag Team Championship that they won in the company they I think they won another Tag Team Championships in TNA a decade later so yeah, you can say seven in their career for Road Dog and Jesse James as a tag team so Final two is, um, or oh, actually final one is Ken Shamrock eliminate um, D.L. Brown with the ankle lock. Then here's the end. So Rock trying to hit or trying to hit um, um, Ken Shamrock with the chair, but he kicked out. So in the end, I think he hit Rock with a suplex. He's gone for like the armbar. I think it was a reverse Fujiwara armbar, but he counted into the ankle lock. Rock tap out and Ken Shamrock. Won this match, so I thought like they're gonna. I thought this is in Canada. I thought this is gonna be Bizarro World, but you know, but no, you know, the baby faces are getting over. Like with Legion of Doom in that tag team match at Canadian Stampede three months prior, they got booed, but like a few months later, yeah, Survivor Series, they got cheered. So it's kind of like mm, very bizarre. So, <laughs> so Ken Shamrock got the victory, and this is the, I think it's the first time that The Rock and Ken Shamrock had their first match one on one. You know, they end up feuding over the Intercontinental Championship the following year in 1998. Royal Rumble, WrestleMania 14, they fought in the King of the Ring tournament in 1998. Plus, I think, they, I think they fought in the first round. I think it was one of the early rounds of the Deadly Games tournament at the next Survivor Series in 1998. So, uh, Shane versus Cam Shamrock, man, because Shamrock was on the verge of come the next top star, but unfortunately, you know, I don't know what the reason, he was on the verge, he, it's a shame, you know, I think he's a good talent, I think it has to do with the, um, the top spots has been taken, you know, that's another story for another time, I might, I'll, I'll explain why Shamrock, um, um, never got that world championship, um, not in that world championship spot, you know, if, if I want one day review King of the Ring 1998, so. So moving on to the first of two um, championship matches on the show. Um, this one's for the Intercontinental Championship. Um, we got Owen Hart defended the championship against Stone Cold Steve Austin. This is their rematch from SummerSlam. So at, at SummerSlam, Austin and Owen had that match. Um, Owen, uh, first of all, they all did like the, was it? I think Owen countered the Tilt the World Backbreaker and hit Austin with the Tombstone Power Driver, not the Undertaker's Tombstone Power Driver, but the um, it's basically the I think it's the ass first Tombstone Power Driver that really dropped Austin on his head. He injured his neck, and you know both careers kind of changed for both Austin and Owen. Owen got back backlash politically, and Austin is not the same. He's never the same worker ever again. So. For, m for months now, Austin got pissed off. He can't wrestle in the ring. He ended up Stone Cold Stunned like um, Jim Ross, Jerry the King Lawler, Vince McMahon. You know, you can tell Austin was getting over. Um, and also attacking Owen in a in, in few occasions, like one time, dressed up like a police officer. Um, and Owen came out um, wearing the Owen 316 I Just Broke Your Neck t shirt. I don't think they made it as a piece of merchandise, so it's a good. Cool heat for for Owen. So yeah, um, the build up to this is not between Owen and Austin. It's more between Owen Heart Foundation Nation Domination. The one match they should have done on the show was Nation Domination versus Heart Foundation. I don't understand why they did that. You know, you know, here's my fantasy booking. I wish they did this match. You know, Heart Foundation Nation Domination have Austin and the X eliminate both Brett and Owen in that match, you know, to set up their championship matches later on on the show. But that's just me. So anyway, um, this is Austin's first match back since the injury. And he's no longer doing the, the, the ringmaster or stunning Steve Austin in WCW. You know, the technical style, he's just a brawl. So um, it's more of a brawl. Um, in fact... Austin was getting booed. He got booed in Canadian Stampede when the show was in Calgary. 
and now he got booed by the Canadians in Montreal. So, um, yeah, and the fans, they were chanting, break his neck. And also, they were, yeah, they were really good, the fans in Montreal. They were ch in the last Survivor Series match I talk about, they were chanting, Rocky sucks. So, <laughs> yeah, they're not really cheering the um, heels. They're booing The Rock. Anyway, let's get back to Owen and Austin. Yeah, they were chanting, yeah, they, yeah, they were booing Austin. They were chanting, break his neck. Because the fans want to see Owen break Austin's neck again. So, yeah, Owen trying to hit Austin with a tombstone. Uh, not a tombstone, but a regular power driver. But Austin countered it. Um, they were fighting in the crowd. Um, and also, Owen trying to get himself disqualified. He kind of choke Austin with a piece of cable. And he's, sh <laughs> he's shouting like, disqualify me, disqualify me. You know, he's mine, stuff like that, you know. Um, trying to keep it short and simple. So in the end, uh, and also they did a, a callback to the spot at SummerSlam. You know, the tilt the will thing that led to Austin injured his neck. This time they managed to, you know, hit the, I think it was Owen and Austin. One of them hit the, the tilt the will backbreaker. This time no neck was broken. So in the end, Austin hit Owen with the Stone Cold Stunner to win this match. And regain the, the Intercontinental Championship for the second time. Because he won the first time. But he didn't really got a chance to defend it because he have to vacate due to um yeah due to injury. So the the Intercontinental Championship tournament they did you know in October was a waste of time. I said in my review of SummerSlam ninety seven, I think it said in some rules. I'm gonna say it right now they should have uh, Owen just won the title, got some heat. Owen retained the title, and then Austin win it. You know it's a shame. Austin never got a chance to defend the Intercontinental title. Um, it was Austin's second and last Intercontinental Championship win in his career. And he ended up like feuding with The Rock the next month at DX in your house. Then he ended up like moving on to the world title pitcher, um, winning, uh, winning the, the 98 Rumble match. And move on to the promised land, winning his first world championship at WrestleMania 14 the following year in 1998. So it was an okay match. It was just... Oh, uh, uh, Austin's like revenge on the guy who almost ended his career and regained the championship. You know that he won that 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 past summer. So, I need a drink. My throat's a bit dry. Um. Anyway, so let's move on to the main event. So the main event. Um. This is for the World Wrestling Federation Championship. Bret Hart, the WWF champion, defending the belt against. The European champion, Shawn Michael, because Shawn won the European championship against British Bulldog, David Boy Smith, at one night only in September of that year. So, first time in 18 months. So, here's the story. I'll keep it short and simple. At WrestleMania 12, the previous year in 1996, Bren Austin, uh, Bren, Bren Michaels, Bren Shawn. Bren Shawn had that Iron Man match at WrestleMania 12. It went into overtime. Sean hit the sweet chain music on Brett to win his first of three WWF championships. So, and also there were plans to do a rematch at WrestleMania 13. Brett gets his win back, but unfortunately, Sean don't want to put over Brett. Fake, he self proclaimed fake a knee injury, but at the same, yeah, it's, I don't want to get into it, it's debatable. So, it pit, Brett got pissed off. So. This has become not just an in-ring or on-screen feud, but a real-life feud. Um, they, were, they were originally supposed to have a match at King of the Ring. Unfortunately, Brett suffered an injury. And also, they Sean cut the Sunny Day promo on Brett because he thought Brett had Sunny Days. You know, referring to Brett cheating on his wife for Sunny Tanny Sitch. So, they had a, a backstage fight, um, you know, in real life. So... 18 months without the teasing, like they have matches, they should have had a, a triple threat match at SummerSlam, but they never, they, they cut promos, they attack each other, but never had a, a match, so it's really personal. And also, like I said, it's not between Bren and Sean, it's between the Nation Domination and Heart Foundation, so, like, let's talk about this match, so, and also, Vince McMahon, this is the start of the Vince McMahon character, we'll get to that later on, so, you know, he had Michael Cole, Earlier interview, Vince, that, you know, who's going to put it the winner? Vince says, I don't know. So, fingers crossed. So, anyway, so the match between Brett, 
Brett, uh, Brett and Sean two or Brett actually three because they fought at um, actually four actually I think it's four because they fought at uh, Survivor Series ninety two, they fought in that Family Feud uh, match at Survivor Series ninety three, uh, the Iron Man the Iron Man match at WrestleMania twelve in ninety six. Now so this is the fourth match of the rivalry between Sean and Brett. They didn't, I don't I don't know if they fought in the, in the tag team division like. Rockers, Heart Foundation, I don't know. Anyway, the match was really good. It's more of a brawl between Sean and Brett. Um, they're fighting throughout, like, the whole book is a brawl. Um, I think they're fighting in the crowd. And before that, Sean basically grabbed the Canadian flag, wiped it on his ass. I think he, he humped it. You know, he's basically bashing Canadians. You know, Jim Ross says, we apologize. And <laughs> it's funny, in that earlier Survivor Series match, you know, uh, Bulldog White, you know, Mark Merrow's USA hat up his ass, so basically bashing Americans, so you're not going to see that in today's wrestling product, you know, we're in this sensitive um, era, anyway, the match was really good, fighting in the crowd, um, I think like Brett or Sean, I think Brett suplexed Michaels onto the concrete floor, one of them, I think, got suplex, the, suplexed one of them onto the still steps, this was getting good, um, and then, um, I think like Brett, I think Brett or Sean, I think Brett choked, uh, Sean with the American flag. I think one of them got choked with the Quebec flag, you know, because one, I think it's Lafon or Furnace waving the Quebec, Quebec flag because the show was in Quebec, in Montreal, by the way, with a French Canadian uh, with announcer because similar to one I only did with, uh, was it Carsten Schaefer, who's actually British, I think. You had um, um, this French Canadian guy. I'm not gonna remember who he's who he is. Can't pronounce his name. My apologies. So it's nice to have like a foreign ring announcer speaking his native language instead of the traditional WWF ring announcers like uh, like um, on the with, at the time you had um, Tony Chimel, Tony Chimel and Howard Finkel. This is years before they added um, Lenny and Garcia. Anyway, so so it was really it was yeah, it was good. Um, Brett locked in the figure four leg lock onto Shawn Michaels onto the ring pose. He did it inside the ring. This was getting really good. This is basically match of the night. So so um, Shawn or Brett basically hit. He hit a move off the top rope, trying to hit Sean. Sean pulled the referee. The referee was Earl Hebner. And here's the coup de grace of this. So, Sean locking the sharpshooter on Brett, his own submission hold. And Vince McMahon said to Earl Hebner, I think he said, ring the bell, ring the fucking bell. And, yep, Hebner rings the bell. Sean, you know, he, he proclaims that he made Brett Hart tap out, but he didn't. And Shawn Michaels won the WWF Championship for the third time. Third and final championship in his career. He, he, he won the World Tower again in 2002, but that's a different championship. So Shawn was pissed off, not really celebrating. So, And the most iconic moment, and also the Montreal Screwjob, also was part of the Bret Hart documentary, Wrestling With Shadows. He had Bret spitting in the face of Vince McMahon. I think... You're not gonna see it. I think they, you know, yeah. Brett like got pissed off, throwing the the TV monitor after you know the broken um announce table that was the Spanish announce table, and wrote down. He kind of like visibly, visible, visibly. My apologies. Visibly, invisible. He basically wrote down WCW, like like without writing with uh with it with a pen and paper. It's just invisible. That's my word. I'm trying to say. I'm speaking too fast, by the way. Invisibly wrote WCW, um, and that was definitely Bret Hart's last match in the company for 13 years. So, like I said, I'm not going to talk about the Montreal Screwjob for this video because it's, you're not going to get the final. We're not going. To, we're not going to get the truth. So here's I'm going to talk about some of it. So the original plan. Here's the original plan. The original plan was supposed to be the match was supposed to be end in a schmaz because you have Bulldog and and the Anvil. They're a pit, they're arrived at career position, waiting for their cue. I think you had the Heart Foundation and DX and in the brawl and other wrestlers and with a brawl that ends, you know, ends the show. 
Um, but here's here's the kicker on this: it will be bad for business. Hate to use the quote of Triple H. You know, he uses best for business, but this is gonna be bad for business. And also, there's rumors like you know the the poster did this match months like weeks early before the show, but that's also bad for business because people in Montreal want to see Brett and Sean. You know, that's the headliner of the Survivor Series. So, and also Brett, you know, you know, because he wants to stay with the company. You know, Vince trying to offer Brett the twenty-year contract, but unfortunately didn't have the finances. So, uh, I heard rumors like Vince gave him the green light to let him go to WCW. So. So, I don't want to get into it, like I said. So, Brett ended up leaving, going to WCW. He had a mixed bag run in WCW, part of the, the NWO. Um, he ended up, uh, end up winning more championships. I think he went winning the US title, the world title. And he ended up ending his career in the hands of Goldberg at Starcade 99. And it did their version of the Montreal Screwjob, you know, with Piper, Colin Fucking Bell. And, um, yeah. Um, and I look to Brett with the stroke. So, I think Brett should have never come to WCW because if he came to the WWF, I don't know if he'd get lost in the shuffle. He'd probably have a, like a, he'll appear a little bit, but the more focus on upcoming guys in the Attitude Era, guys like Michaels and Austin and Rock and Mankind. I don't know. I think Brett is the loyal WWF guy. He's been there since 1983. And it, it ended ended it in nineteen ninety seven, so it's just really sad to see Brett's career end in an anticlimactic way. Um, because he's been a through this is similar to the AJ thing because AJ, you know, you know, TNA offers AJ if if he wants to stay to TNA, he needs to get a sixty percent cut. AJ refused. It's in the same situation, so maybe it has to do with money, but um, so, you know, you know, it's just a damn shame for Brett. So. So you won't see Brett again, like I said, for thirteen years. Actually, f actually, a decade later, because in two thousand five he purposely um, apologized to Vince, and then in two thousand six he ended up getting an inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. Then the first Raw of two thousand ten, you know, Brett and Sean purposely um, apologized, put the you know put their deficit aside after. The, uh, you know, 12 going on 13 years and that was it so that was yeah that was the end of the, the personal rivalry between Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels um Vince became really look as Vince was getting away from the commentary side he's been here for for years now because at the time because the, the first authority heel, heel authority figure was Eric Bischoff you know he turned heel after the Nitro after Halloween Havoc so he used the Montreal screw job and become the top heel of the company, you know, feeling with Steve Austin in 1998. The company will hit the fans over the head with the Montreal Screwjob for the next 25 years because the following year at Survivor Series in 98, in the finals of the Deadly Games tournament, the match between Rock and Mankind, Rock, you know, locking the, sh the sharpshooter onto Mankind, turn on the fans, became the corporate champion, and that was more of a work. I don't know. This is more of a, a, a real life screw job. Like I said, I don't want to talk about it. So I'm trying to keep it short and simple. So Sean will remain the champion until, um, you know, he, he, he faced Ken Shamrock at DX in your house in December, faced the Undertaker at the Royal Rumble in January. He had a, he injured his back that led Sean in that early temporary retirement until come back to the company in 2002. So, um, that's my spiel on it. So sorry, I'm not talking about the Montreal screw job. Like I said, you never going to um know the whole truth. So, and I heard rumors like Triple H, you know, stuck his big nose in it. So like I said, don't I'm not gonna cover it anymore. So my final reign for Survivor Series 1997. Boy, this is a doozy. I thought going into this, this is gonna be a bad show, but now nah, this is a good show. Not a really good show, but a decent show. I was give, I'll give it a 7 out of 10. That's my genuine rating of it. So, 7 out of 10. It's a tale of two tastes. You know, the two... I'm not the part of the Montreal Screwjob in the bad for me, to be to be honest. Didn't do nothing for me because, one, I'm watching the show. I'm watching it. In, this is not 1997. I'm watching this. This is 2022. 
So I, I'm not putting it in the bad. The only two matches in the bad has to be the first two Survivor Series matches. You know, Team um, Heg Banners versus Team Garwins or Team New Age Outlaws, whatever you call them, and DOA versus the Truth Commission. So besides the Austin and Owen, okay match. You know, it was just Owen uh, Austin's combat match. And gain revenge of the guy who almost ended his career, but the good is the good. I really I like the matches. I like um you know Team USA versus Team Canada, uh, Nation of Domination versus Team Shamrock, plus you know and LOD, LOD and Ahmed Johnson. Kane versus Mankind was a fun match to watch, and I like the um I like the main event inside of the Montreal Screwjob between Bray and Sean. So. Um, I heard, you know, I think it's a bit better than the the WrestleMania 12 match from 1996. So because it was damn boring because it's an hour long. So I might review WrestleMania 12 in the future. So anyway, so I hope you enjoy my review of Survivor Series 1997. Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Smash the like button. Click the like. Click the bell. Subscribe to the Central Man Network on YouTube. Be part of the Central Unit for more wrestling videos and more. Next time, I, I want to get one more classic Survivor Series review for, before the month is out. We're getting near to Survivor Series 2022 because of War Games, so it got me thinking. This is another anniversary Survivor Series show I'm going to review next time. It's in MSG. We got the return of Big Papa Pump. Plus, we got the um, a comeback of an icon. Plus a debut of a good concept, you know, known as the Elimination Chamber. You know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about Survivor Series 2002. For many fans, they consider Survivor Series 02 one of the greatest Survivor Series of all time. So that's the next time I'm going to review it. So this is Central Man officially signing out. And that's my review of Survivor Series 97. I give it a thumbs up. Good show.